Where my nerds at? Hey, my people. <laughs> We're the people with the big ideas. We're the people that can change the future. In a world where we're struggling or we're worried about what's going to happen tomorrow, where we know there's conflict, where we know the planet is struggling, our ideas can save that, can save our future. But what if I'm sitting on a big idea and I need to get this idea into the audience? Now, firstly, I'm probably going to need two strong men and a wheelbarrow, so where's Henry Cavill when you need him? <laughs> Lobby Superman-like into the audience, and we create a bit of a splash. Has the idea landed? Maybe. Has it created enough of a wave? Maybe. But what if that idea didn't have to land? What if it could skip? What if we could take that big idea and pass it on to the next person who takes it to their world, to their network, and get it to skip? Can that change our world more if more people gather behind our ideas? So let's look a little bit at that. So how do we go from that to this? Now, I once had a director I worked for, and um, I think he's uh, the epitome of what it's like for nerds to try and get an idea across. He would walk up to him, and um, he would see you coming, and the first thing you do is say, duck and dive, grab a cup of coffee, get into conversation with someone else, or walk into his office and close the door, you know? Recognizable, right? You've got this burning idea, you've got this thing you want to tell people, and nobody's listening. And it's important. And that's what happens to us. People think we're socially maladjusted, that we do not engage. We talk to each other, we engage. It's just that other people don't get us, right? And they don't get us because for the longest time they've been telling us these lies about ourselves. We're not socially maladjusted. But if you start at five years of age going to a teacher and telling them with glee in your eye about this wonderful homework you've done and that you're five steps ahead of everybody else and they tell you, go sit down, you go, yeah. It's also known as social rejection. And some interesting fMRI studies have shown that when we have social rejection, the pain part of the brain that registers physical pain lights up. That's a new twist. If you've been physically abused all your life, being beaten with a baseball bat five to ten times a day by being ignored, you're not socially maladjusted. You're showing the symptoms of abuse. Because the next time somebody ignores an idea, you cringe even in anticipation. So how do we take that away? How do we get people to listen? So we can get those ideas out there, get the ideas to skip, because an idea that never just needs to land, it really needs to skip. You know, the pond sort of lands and gets like, tick, 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 tick. that feeling of yes. Yeah? So back to Ben, this manager of mine. He would duck and dive, but then he opened up his door on a Friday afternoon because he heard about an open door policy. Well, now I've got him cornered, right? <laughs> so I walked in the door, and as I walked in, I could see this multitude of emotions playing on his face. It was this abject horror going to resignation and then going to... <sighs> and then this bright light all of a sudden. I went like, ooh, mm, what's happening here? He said, you know what, just give me one second. Um, can you take one minute and just give me the management summary? No, I didn't hear the word management, I just heard the word summary. So summary means I take a big thing and I make it smaller, right? So one of these. Oh yeah, sorry, very heavy. Um, <laughs> and you take this and you throw this into an audience. And it, again, it's going to make a bit of a splash, right? but it's going to stick the landing. It's still not going to skip. 
But he gave me a very interesting principle, and that is to start making it smaller. Make it, as we say in Dutch, bahapar, or basically chewable. Give me bite-sized chunks, you know? And so, let's go towards this. Now, one of the ways to do that is, what do we normally do when we try and explain to someone? Well, yes, don't worry, I'm going to keep my hat on. You don't have to worry about that. But we draw pictures for people, right? Give them an infographic. And then they may listen, right? Make it exciting. You know, like a cartoon strip. Tonight, we're taking over the world. No, no, different cartoon strip. This one. Okay. We start with a big idea. We need to go to a smaller, digestible bit. And we need a nerd to help us do that. Okay? We're at the center of everything. Yeah, yeah, all right. But we also need some hands and support from other people. And uh, maybe some tools. So if infographic is a tool, what other tools could we use? I once was sent um, to a client. I was the project manager at the time and also managing the account. And they, they sent me the client and said, well, you know what? You go sort out that project. We've had five project managers already, and they've all given up. Nothing worse can happen. Why don't you go take it? Take it. Okay. And I walked in, and uh, let's just say her name was Ruby. Okay. And I walked into Ruby's office, and um, she just took one look at me and went like, oh, you're from that company. So you know what, Ruby, I, I fully appreciate all the emotions surrounding this and all the frustration. I totally get it. I'm asking you two things. Please just forgive me the trespasses of my predecessors. Let us start with a clean slate. Point one. Point two, what is your biggest frustration? And she told me, we're constantly putting out fires. And when we're putting out fires, we're not making progress because all we're trying to do is stop a scorched earth policy. Okay? So, so what if I could be your fireman? What if I could put out fires for you? Metaphor, right? We all know firemen put out fires, right? No. Firemen don't just put out fires. Firemen prevent fires. That's their primary job. And you have to be a nerd to know that, by the way. So it became our new mantra. As a team, eventually 37 people, we worked with a client to always look at how can we prevent the fires before they start, and when they start, how do we get them out as quickly as possible? And that led to more efficiency, it led to more effectiveness, and the client database or client base that grew and grew with cross and upsell because every time something went wrong we said and here is how we can prevent it from happening next time and what I did there was two things one I looked for a metaphor and I looked for a juxtaposition so a metaphor and a juxtaposition because the moment we have that it creates a memory hook because we take somebody from a place of safety we've just provided to a place of disconcordance, which is slightly unsafe, and then we provide a safety element again. They never forget, and they always remember your idea. So now we're with firemen. We were starting to take these stones and getting them to skip. And we were giving them to people, and it landed, and it stuck. And it skipped across the organization, but only when we got engaged. But how do we take an idea and get other people to start skipping it on our behalf? Now, the one thing about us nerds is we don't have just one idea. We have a few. The thing is, which one do we pick? Is it going to be this one, or this one? What does your pond look like? See, if I know that your pond is, in, is an oasis in the middle of a desert with beautiful palm trees around it and a rock or two, maybe this one will work. What if 
It was a valley, the beautiful rock pool, the little waterfall in the corner. Maybe this one will work. But how do I get to know which of my stories, which of my ideas are going to resonate with you? I need to figure that out by asking questions. So as nerds, we need to start learning how to ask questions. And the place I want us to turn to is to the FBI. And have, they can interrogate, right? <laughs> yeah, that's not the one I'm looking for. Okay. This is a slightly different example. Now, I had the opportunity to go to a university in Massachusetts for a program on negotiation and um, mediation. And there was this FBI guy sitting in the class with me. He later wrote a very important, very famous book. Chris, yes. And one of the things that he said in the book is, when you talk to a hostage taker, you need to find rapport and resonance as quickly as possible because there's human lives at stake here. And to be able to do that, we need to connect and connect quickly. Now to do that, we only need to ask two questions. We need to say what, and we need to say how. Not how and when, okay? What and how. Because that gives us information we can work with. And when we get information, we've got ideas, and when we've got ideas, baby, can we skip them? But how do we find the resonance now that we have all these ideas? Well, everybody's gonna go like, active listening, so we should summarize, right? Okay, so give me the facts, but just make them smaller. No, not just the facts. We need the feelings. We need to know why it matters to someone. And we can only do that when we start listening for the feelings. So when we summarize, we don't just summarize the content, not just the facts. We also summarize the feelings. Facts, feelings, skip. Okay, because if I know what matters to you most, I can help you find the solution that matters to you. But when I can figure out what matters most to your pond, your network, their network, I can make sure that you can skip the stones, not just me. And so when we go into this future where we want our big ideas to land and skip, We need something from other people. We need them to give us that corner me in my office one or five minutes of their time for our management summary. We need to know that they're listening and we need to ask them the what and the how questions and they just need to give us their time. Make sure it's time boxed there, they don't have to worry about it being too long, but get into a room and if you're not a nerd, give a nerd a hug. And our hugs is a little bit of your time, a little bit of your engagement, a little bit of who you are and what matters to you. And that, my ladies and gentlemen, that is a hug for a nerd. And if you can give us a hug, we're going to give you something really special in return. Because all of us can believe in a future that's better, and that future that's better is only optimism. But to get to that better future, we need a path to get there. And to me, that is the definition of hope. It's not believing the future is going to be better, but finding the way there. And we have the paths. So if you can give us a hug, we can give you hope. Thank you.